Hello guys, welcome to this painting tutorial. In this video I decided to paint a Deathwing Terminator for a Dark Angels army. This model was really fun to paint and I hope you like this tutorial. If you do, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you would like to see more videos. So I'm going to start with the white primed miniature and I'm going to use Rackarth Flesh as a base for the whole armor. Be sure to thin down the paint at least one to one in all of the steps where I'm uh, base coating this miniature. If you would like a darker base color you can use the uh, Sandry Dust paint which is a more sensible color for bone. but. Uh, I kind of like this record flesh look instead, and uh, that's what I went for. But if you would like to use the uh, sandry dust, that would do well too. But the recesses would the recesses would look a uh, little bit uh, browner. Now that that's done, I'm going to give the whole model a uh, griffon sepia wash, which is which is the uh, Seraphim Sepia for, for the new range and I'm going to start uh, uh, mopping the, uh, the wash or shade into all of the recesses of the model. As you can see I can attach and disattach the, the arm because this is a Dark Vengeance model and I didn't really, uh, didn't really glue it together because I can reach other parts of the miniature without uh, without uh, messing up the, the colors. Now I'm going to start uh, highlighting and I'm going to use Yushav Tip Bone for that. Remember to thin it down. This is the first layer which is going to cover all of the armor areas but leaving the, the shadows on this color, the deepest recesses and crevices. Now, as, as when painting with uh, light colors, be sure to paint to thin down your paint and uh, don't worry if the first layer doesn't cover too well, just give it one coat and leave it dry completely and don't tamper with it because you will create uh, paint crumbs and brush strokes. So you can go quickly about it and uh, just leave one layer and and come back later and give it a second coat to make it look better. Now this is how it looks with the first layer and you can see that there are some places that don't look quite well yet and I'm going in with a second coat. At this step I'm not worrying about uh, painting over the rivets and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to use uh, the Griffin Sepia wash again to make them pop out at a later stage. Now it's good to remember for this miniature to always have uh, clean hands and and very and clean water because uh, the light color can be really shifted or smudged with other colors or dirt in your hands. So just you have to be careful with that. And then I'm going to use Screaming Skull and I'm going to thin it down and use it as a f highlight for all of the bone areas. To be honest, I didn't thin quite enough this uh, highlight and that's why I'm going to go over it again with a glaze of the same color. But for now, I'm just uh, I'm just uh, coloring the the areas where I want to have uh, a light highlight where the where the uh, the light would hit on the model.
now I'm going to use the screaming skull again and I'm going to use uh, glaze medium and water I'm going to use a ratio of 1 to 1 to 1 which is uh, screaming skull water and paint and I'm going to start glazing over the areas where the colors didn't blend too well because the previous color I didn't thin enough I mean it, it was thin but not thin enough so that it didn't leave any uh, sort of marks where you can differentiate between the screaming skull and a shafty bone so here I'm glazing putting a, a very thin layers on, on the parts when you can see the change between colors and that made them disappear now I'm going to use Griffin Sepia and I'm going to find all of the little rivet areas like here and start uh, pulling a little bit of the wash to make them pop up again also you can use the Griffin Sepia wash here to fix uh, places where you the paint went into the crevices by accident just uh, take a little bit of the wash and try to pin wash it on the area where you want to fix. Alright, now that that's done, I'm going to use White Scar as an edge highlight for all of the armor plates. Now, of course, if you don't want to get this level of uh, quality, you can drop a couple of highlights if you would like and not blend the colors as, as I tried but uh, this is just a uh, in this tutorial I'll try to show you all the steps that I can take to make this miniature really look uh, well decently painted and I hope you can uh, take what you take what what works for you and the rest you can just uh, ignore it. Now for uh, edge highlighting remember to thin down your paint you can use uh, flow improver to to better the flow of the paint so that you can uh, paint easier or you can uh, you can use uh, water instead which I did I didn't I don't have the flow improver but that would help you that would help you a lot now this is how the miniature looks when all of the highlights are done and from now on I'm going to start base coating other areas such as the iron parts with lead pilcher just of course be very careful to paint just on the parts where uh, where you want the color. This is a little bit hard because uh, the 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 rest of the armor is very light and it's easy to uh, just go on with other base coats onto uh, places where you don't want to. It's easy to clean up just using the shafty bone or the screaming skull depending on on which part did you uh, did you paint. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, something you have to have in mind. Next I'm going to use Caliban Green and then I'm going to use it to paint on the uh, just the chest plate and other selected part of parts if you would like to have other parts in green. Then I'm going to use uh, Mechanicus Standard Grey at this color I'm going to use it to, all, to color in all of the uh, all the gray areas and then I'm going to use Mephiston red to paint all of the red areas now this is all for now for this part of the tutorial I hope you enjoy it and learned a thing of two or two about painting uh, this kind of miniature and please don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you like the first part of this tutorial and follow the link to the second part 
I would uh, like to invite you to check out my Facebook page as well so that you can uh, see what I'm working on and have a more direct contact with me if you would like. And uh, I hope you liked this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you later.